Hey, what's up guys? This is the L7C. And this is a little different. We're already in a game. This is just something I want to talk about. Currently, if you see the board right now, I have the Link Karibo, the Dark Magic Circle, two Blue Eyes White Dragons. Uh, my opponent has a Dragoon, one of the Ebons, an Apprentice Illusion, Eternal Soul, two Back Row. I should quit. I should have quit a long time ago. Here I am getting Harpies Feather Dusted, which is not good at all but the reason i wasn't even going to record this video i was just casually playing around and i ran into this guy and my hand was the worst hand possible and their hand was the best hand possible they started off the game with a red eyes fusion and the reason i started recording is because i wanted to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh competitive mindset and Yu-Gi-Oh pride uh, you might think those are funny topics, but where I'm from and where I play with the guys that I play with on a weekly basis, um, some of you know, one of them is Pat Rick Production, Pat Rick TV, uh, L7C, Captain Byron Mitchell. Um, if you've listened to some of the Dragon Ball ones, uh, Dragon Ball Expert Mitch Oso, he plays, he hasn't played in a while, but he plays and he has a mindset too. Uh, even L7C member Cedric Ware, um, he's playing... And we all have this Yu-Gi-Oh! pride and competitive spirit that even when the game looks omega bleak, we don't believe in scooping at all. Scooping's not something that we do when we play in person at all. It's just really frowned upon just because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, things might look insurmountably terrible, but and you might not win, but just giving up is just a huge no go for where I'm from, where we play Yu Gi Oh! And I've been playing this game for, for a bit, and I really analyze this game pretty, pretty hard. So here I get the Omni Dragon Bro targets destroyed, so I get a Keeper of Dragon magic. But it's just like any other person would quit here. This is insurmountable. When you've had the worst hand you can have, and they've had the best hand they can have, there's just nothing really you can do. And full spoilers, I do end up losing this game. There's no miraculous comeback. I'm just here talking to you guys about just Yu-Gi-Oh! in general and the mindset of people scooping. I know in this day and age, we have person who wins the coin toss usually wins they go first unless you have hand traps and make a big board you don't even look at your hand or think about your deck's possibilities to break that board you just scoop and then you pray you go first here i am getting a keeper of dragon magic i discard the blue eyes to get a fusion dispatch he has no cards in his hand so he can't negate it with dragoon so then I get a blue eyes white dragon right here. And then I do keeper of dragon magic's effect to get the blue eyes from the grave to bring that back. So then we bring that back and then we make blue eyes twin burst. And then we attack, we attack into Dragoon we actually should have attacked Apprentice first, but it is what it is. At this point, when you're losing this bad, you just make mistakes. So we lose 2,000, but since we didn't destroy Dragoon, Twin Burst gets banished. So you see another one of my cards in my extra deck that could take out a Dragoon, a Blue Eyes Twin Burst, along with a BLS Link Monster. So then you're thinking, if you're watching this, oh, he might make the comeback, but I don't because... Like I already said, this wasn't a comeback game. This is just a talking about game. So I really want to just talk to you guys too also about like when you guys are playing Yu-Gi-Oh! How quickly do you guys scoop or if do you guys even scoop where you play? Do you scoop after a person makes a big board? Do you scoop after you draw a card and then you don't have your combo? Do you scoop when you think you're not going to win or you're just like, yeah, I just want to get to the next game because I know I'm going first and I can set my board. When do you guys give up in there? Yeah, my twin burst got destroyed by his card, which there is really nothing we can do at that point. 
Then we do the effect. We do Link Karibo to get Link Karibo back. The Eternal Souls gets another Dark Magician. And then, yeah, and then we get the Link Karibo and end turn. But yeah, I'm just curious because I watch a lot of people when I watch Yu Gi Oh! online. Uh, they just scoop after the first turn. For example, a person makes a first turn Zexel and they scoop. Be and I'm just like, you didn't even give yourself a chance to play. Uh, they're not, they just used all those resources to make a Zexel, set a monster, set some back row, and fight through. You can activate those cards on your opponent's turn. So fight through, it's one negate. Sure, it's a big negate that you can't activate anything. Let's see what they got. Or this game, the guy had a Dragoon. Dragoon's one of the strongest boss monsters in the game right now, and rightfully so. And I don't think any of these cards, side note, I don't think any of them should be banned. We need boss monsters. Especially in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. It's such a funny community that when an archetype gets a boss monster and it sucks, then they thrash on it. But when the archetype gets a boss monster and it's really good and can make them competitive, people hate on it. For example, like Exexel or a Dragoon. So then I get attacked by the two Dark Magicians. And I, and then it's just not looking too good. We just have a Prisma right now. There's really nothing we can draw to help us. We draw a circle. And we're just like, alright, well, we'll just play the play the circle and see what can happen here. play circle we're hoping we can get a like a faithful servant or something of that nature and we're like oh we might get the faithful servant maybe maybe and it's secret of dark magic which isn't helping us at this time because we have nothing to uh to do that with so then we just set we just set uh, that, and then we set Prisma and call it a turn. And again, this is a point where people would have scooped. Like, why are you playing? You already know you lost. And in theory, yes. I'm 199.9% I'm going to lose this game. And I do lose this game, but at the point of me playing, I was like, I'm going to lose. Unless, you never know what your opponent does. They might misclick, especially online. They might misclick. They might go into a misplay that might give you a chance. So you just keep fighting until the end. Like, there's just... I just am not a fan of the scoop. I'm really not. Like I said earlier in the video, my friends aren't. We play till the end. Uh, Pat Rick uh, TV on Twitch. Pat Rick Productions on YouTube. He has a video out that do people scoop way too early. I think if you you guys should check it out to see what I'm talking about. He, like I already said earlier, he has a good competitive mindset. Like there's not really, we really don't scoop where we're from. And if you ever played us, he's telling me GG. I'm like, I know it's GG, man. And I say GG back. And then you take your lossings like a man or a woman. And he's asking me, what am I waiting for? And I realized it wasn't, I thought I already clicked end turn. So then I click... I clicked the end phase and I was like, oh, sorry. I thought it was me, uh, you. And I'm staring down three dark magicians and it's like, this is funny. And the thing is too, if I had any normal hand, I feel like I could have won this game. But the way I started was just so bad. And him starting with the Dragoon was not good. So, you know, we just played through it. That's the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, not to be cheesy anime or anything like that, but you win or you lose. But what do you learn from those losses? It's just like anything in life. It's just you can't control what you're drawn with the cards you draw in some games. So it's just like, huh, well, you have no choice. Just play through. See the mistakes you made. Uh, watch it as game film and then go through. But don't quit. That's just not going to help you. If you keep scooping every game you think you're going to lose... What are you going to learn? You're not going to learn crazy combos with your own deck. You're not going to learn any of that stuff. So then he's he is Eben Illusion Magician. So we're like, okay, so this is going to be game. He'll banish my face down. And then that will be it. 
Well, then he banishes the back row. Prisma goes. And then we're waiting. He attacks. But so he was 300 short. So, again, there's really nothing we can do here. So we draw White Stone of Ancients. I think we summon White Stone to just get a Link Karibo out. Just to go out. Go out with some pride. Um, even though he's, he does the smile face. He's like, yeah, he did his math wrong. And that's what I'm talking about. If he would have done that math wrong and left me with 300 life points. Unless I would have drawn an evenly matched. Or... Uh, an evenly matched or a lightning storm or a lava golem or heavy um, harpy's feather duster. Like If I would have drawn all those things, it would have been a new game. So that's what I talk about, man. Just don't give up. Just play play the game. And then he goes, I to my ass. He goes, Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight. And it's kind of funny that he has the lock on me, which is completely unnecessary. Uh, does the thing. He banishes, banishes the Link. Karibo, and then he attacks for game, but he was probably not expecting me to fight the way that I did in getting rid of the Dragoon, getting rid of that first big board he had, but I just didn't draw the cards to stay in the game. So then battle phase. He attacks me, Dragon Knight, ends the game. And the moral of this duel is don't give up, guys. Don't scoop. Play through the end. Show some pride and some competitive spirit.